Our Father, by the grace of God, I will be true to thy word. And as we study today, give us wisdom, direct us, and we'll give God the praise. Save the soul that's nearest hell, reclaim the backslider, and revive thy people, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, on this broadcast today, I'm speaking primarily to the unsaved, and yet I'm going to talk mostly about Christians. Now, I know that sounds a little confusing on the surface, but here's what I mean. I want every person listening to my voice, whoever you are and wherever you are, to ask yourself the question, am I born again? Now, I didn't say, are you a church member? And I didn't say, do you have religion? I said, ask yourself the question, am I born again? Am I saved? Now, if you admit to yourself that you're not saved, then I want to ask you a second question. Sitting where you are, riding down the highway, or wherever you may be listening to my voice this moment, if you are not a professed follower of the Son of God, if you're not born again, if you're not saved, then I want to ask you in all seriousness of heart and soul, just what do you hope for in the future? What is your future so far as your thinking is concerned? What do you plan? What do you hope for? Now, we find a portion of a verse of Scripture, and I'm reading just part of it, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Now, that's Hebrews 6.19. Hebrews 6.19. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Now, the hope that he's talking about is what I'm going to speak about today. Now, before I deliver the message, let me give this brief testimony, and I hope you'll bear with me for just a couple of moments. I have faced death twice. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. It was not my prayer or my faith that brought me out of the hospital, this last experience that I had, and uh, that uh, caused God to touch my body. It was not my faith. When I entered the hospital, I'll be honest with you, I'm honest. As I sit before this microphone today, as I enter the hospital, I never thought, I never dreamed that I would ever go home. So many things had happened that pointed and taught me, or I thought in my heart, that I had come to the end of my ministry. I mean that. I'm sincere. I had no hope of ever coming home. But as I entered the hospital, I had a hope that took fear of dying out of my soul. I did not fear death. I had no hope of coming home. But I had a hope of going home to be with the Lord. And I was not afraid. I mean that. Now, that's what I want to talk to you unsaved people about today. If you are not a Christian, what do you hope for after death? If tragedy befalls you today, what do you hope for? What does the future hold for you? You say, Mr. Green, I'll take my chance. Now listen, dear friend, you're not taking a chance in the face of an open Bible and in the face of the preached Word of God and in the face of the message that I'm delivering now you're taking a leap into the dark with your eyes open because the Bible says this is condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men are condemned because they believe not the, the, the Word of God and the hope that God gives. Now, first of all, I want to read 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Now, some people seem to get the idea that Christianity is leaving off a lot of things and participating in a lot of things and giving a lot of things and doing a lot of it. But listen, Christianity is receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, accepting Him as your personal Savior by faith. That's Christianity. Now, in Christ, we have hope in this life, and we have hope beyond the grave. Now, listen, beloved. If I drop dead, if I have a heart attack before I finish this sermon, and if my voice ceases to speak and be heard, if I die while speaking today, the Christ, 
that I'm trusting now will go with me through the valley of the shadow of death and the Christ that I'm trusting now will receive me into the paradise of God and I'll go to be with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Now that's the hope I have. Live or die, I can't lose. Live or die, I'm on the winning side because I have my faith in the Christ who conquered death, hell, and the grave, and he lives to conquer for me that I may be more than conqueror over the world, the flesh, and the devil, and yea, death, hell, and the grave. Now, our hope is in Christ, not only in this life, but in the life to come. But if you're a sinner and you have not put your faith and your trust in Jesus, then you do not have the hope that I have today in Jesus. Now, listen, I'm not holier than thou, and I'm not boasting, and I'm not a braggart, and I, no, sir, but I have hope, and I am trusting in Jesus. And if you're not trusting in Jesus, then you don't have the hope that I have. You say, Mr. Green, I'll take my chance. You're not taking a chance. You're taking a leap straight into hell with your eyes open. You say, I don't believe in hell. That doesn't change it. This old Bible got here before you did, and it'll be here when you're gone. Now I read 2 Thessalonians. I've just read 1 Corinthians 15, 19. Jot these verses down. This sermon will not be in print. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 16, 2 Thessalonians 2, 16, Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. My, what a verse of scripture, what a nugget of gold, what a tremendous promise, what a tremendous fact, what a tremendous truth, and what tremendous assurance. Let me read it. I hope you have your New Testament open. Second, uh, second, second, second Thessalonians it is, not Corinthians. Second Thessalonians 2.16. Hear it now. I'm going to read it slow. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, comma, and God, comma, even our Father, comma. Did you see that? Christ himself, God, even God the Father, which hath loved us. Jesus Christ loved us. God the Father loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation everlasting consolation and good hope through grace through grace hallelujah my hope today is built on nothing less than jesus blood and righteousness not my righteousness because all of my goodness is as filthy rags yes there is none good no not one but hallelujah jesus christ is made unto us wisdom righteousness sanctification and redemption and praise god we have everlasting consolation. We have an everlasting hope through the grace of God. Unmerited, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Praise his name. Listen, sinner friend, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, sinner friend. What hope do you have? What consolation do you have? Listen, what does tomorrow hold? If you die today without Christ, where will you be this time tomorrow? If you go on and live another year, 5, 10, 20, 50 years and die without the Lord, where will you spend long eternity? Well, you say, preacher, I have plenty of time. Listen, today is the day of salvation, and right now is the accepted time. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Thou knowest not what the day may bring. You ought to say, if the Lord wills, I shall live and shall do this or that. You do not know what tomorrow brings. The only safe thing to do is to be saved this very moment. Be saved this very instant. And if you put it off another 60 seconds, another two minutes, another five minutes, if you put it off until tomorrow, see, so for you, tomorrow may never come. All right, what is your hope? What are your plans? Thank God, the Lord Jesus Christ, God, even our Father, loved us and hath given us everlasting, everlasting consolation and hope through grace. Praise God, we're saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now I'm reading 1 Peter 1.3. 1 Peter 1.3. I read as a text Hebrews 6.19. Then I read 1 Corinthians 15, 19. 
Then I read 2 Thessalonians 2, 16. Now I'm reading 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a living hope, hallelujah, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. God the Father hath begotten us unto a lively or a living hope through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, beloved, hear this please. Paul speaking to the church at Corinth, he said, I preached unto you first of all that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and he was seen of Cephas, and so forth and so on, reading on down. Now that's 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 3. Listen, the center and the heart and the soul and the, the very essence of salvation is the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The death without the resurrection could not have saved us. In other words, he died, he was buried, and he rose again according to the scriptures. And if it had happened any other way except according to the scriptures, that every atheist in the country could point his finger in your face and my face and say your Bible's a lie. But I want to say, my friend, that old book has stood the onslaughts of hell, and that old book will be standing when every atheist and every infidel is screaming for a drop of water to cool his or her parching tongue in the pit. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a living hope my hope is alive. My hope will never die. My hope is Jesus, and praise God he can't die. Listen, I believe him for salvation. I trust him for victory. He said, I'll go with you through the valley of the shadow of death. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you, that you may boldly say, God is my helper, and I shall not fear. Perfect love casteth out fear. He that feareth, uh, because fear hath torment, he that feareth hath not been made perfect in love. Thank God, I say again, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Christ is my salvation, my victory, my hope, my assurance, and Christ Jesus has removed the, the fear of dying, the fear of facing God, the fear of the judgment out of my heart, and I have a hope that is sure, steadfast and sure. In Proverbs 10:28, Proverbs 10:28. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. Oh, yes, I'm happy today. I'm happy. Yes, praise God. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. But if you're lost, you've never experienced that happy day. But you can experience it this day, right now. Bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And he will. He's just waiting for an invitation as many as received him. Receive him right now by faith. And you can say this is the happy day, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. My friend, if you're not saved, you have no hope. Please don't take this wrong. Please don't take this wrong. What do you have to live for if you don't know Jesus? You may lose all your earthly possessions today. Before the sun sets today, you may lose everything you have. That's not impossible. You may lose your health, and you may be bedfast, a shut-in, flat of your back, yea, paralyzed, unable to speak before this day is over. You may lose your possessions, you may lose your health, it's possible that you could lose your mind. Sad to think about, but not impossible. Now listen, if you don't have Jesus, my friend, what do you know? What do you have? What do you expect? In other words, what is there in your life to smile about, to rejoice about, and to be glad about? If in this life only there is life, then I had rather been an animal than a man. I had rather been a tree not a man out in the forest, a tree looking up to heaven. But praise God, 
I'm glad I'm a man created in the image of God and I have everlasting life through the marvelous grace of God and I have a hope that is steadfast and sure and this hope is an anchor for my soul. Now the hope of the righteous is gladness. Praise God. But the expectation of the sinner, the wicked, shall perish. Friend, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, you're just one heartbeat from hell. You're just one step from perdition, damnation, everlasting torment. I beg you, if you're not saved, may this be the day that you surrender to Jesus. Now I read Romans 5 and verse 2. Romans 5, 2. By whom, and of course verse 1 says, therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God. Then he goes on down in verse 2, Romans 5, 2. By whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice. We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in the hope that we have. Listen, beloved. Suppose I do lose my mind. Suppose I am paralyzed and I never speak again. Suppose I do drop dead while I am delivering this message. And it's not impossible. But suppose I do. Praise God, I have a hope. Even though I lose my ability to think and reason, if my mind leaves me, if my health leaves me, and if I die, praise God, I have Jesus. Death cannot take Jesus away from me. I'm glad that I have a hope that is as strong, yea, a million times stronger than the rock of Gibraltar. Thank God my hope is just as powerful, just as strong as God Almighty, because in Christ I have God. Now, read on down. One more. Romans 15, 13. Now, the God of hope... Now the God of hope, and if you don't have God, you have no hope. He's the God of hope. He is the author of hope. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now listen. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. The God of hope fill you with all joy and and peace. If you do not have God, you do not have hope. And if you have God, you have hope. Hope that is steadfast and sure and will never fade away. Now the last verse, Titus 2.13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, I'm looking for Jesus. Today, I'm looking for His coming in the rapture to get to church. He's coming. I do not know the day. I do not know the hour. But He's coming. And I hope He will come today. You say, preacher, that scares me. Not if you're born again. Not if you're right with God. It doesn't scare you. And if it scares you, you just need to bow your head and say, Lord... Put all of my sin under the blood. I trust you. I believe you. I receive you. And I can assure you, if you'll put your faith and confidence in Him, and not in your feelings, and not in your ability, and not in flesh, and not in some religion, some denomination, some church building, put your faith in Jesus, then you can say, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. All right, sinner friend, what do you hope for? If you don't know Jesus, God help you to trust him right now. Father, honor the word. Honor thy precious word, O God. Honor thy word and save that soul that's nearest hell, that soul with no hope. Save them for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please fast forward to the end and turn the cassette over for the next message in this series.